Welcome to Warmaster Podcast, episode 17 of uh, Adventures in 3D Printing. Today we're going to be talking about Chromity Forge. Um, Chromity Forge. These guys are hand gunners, really. So we'll call, I, I can't remember what John, gunners, I think he calls them. Hand gunners and rangers we're going to look at. Um, as I hinted at the end of the last video, and I didn't find out until I printed all of them, some of my dwarves have been shrinking. So you may, we may come across some and now I've undercoated and, and primed them. Um, so you can actually see details. It may be that they're, um, they're a bit lower to the ground than they should be and you've kind of lost feet. But um, maybe we will see that, maybe we won't see that. They're also based in the way that I base miniatures for painting. So when you've got, we need four of these little two stands on a base. So I do the outside two and then I put the rest of them on a strip like this using double-sided tape and then you can paint them and then you just insert the two in the middle and then you can finish off your basing. So let's have a look around these miniatures. Um, nice work as always. I'm a little bit conscious that if there are any feet missing, that may be due to the fact that I'm having printing issues and not the fact that they don't have feet. Although uh, with dwarves, it's quite hard to tell if their feet are under their cloaks or not. <laughs> so maybe we'll see some with feet and some without. So we've got dwarf hand gunners. That's nice. Some nice variety of poses I found. And again, it's probably more due to my resin type than anything. This gap here is quite big and there's no nothing bracing these two miniatures. Like uh, the GW Metal stuff tended to have this gun almost, if not on his shoulder, then pointing it at the back of this fella's head. So it looked a bit silly, but that was because they had to get the metal to flow from here through here. Uh, and if you left a gap here, this would be quite difficult to vent and it would likely not cast this, this end of this gun. Uh, but obviously with 3D printing, you don't have to worry about such things. But if you're using a fragile resin, like any cubic clear, uh, when you try and remove these from the plate, the stress will go through here. Uh, and if it's going to break, it's going to break between these two miniatures. And that happened quite a lot, unfortunately. I mean, it, you'll be lucky to find uh, more than about a third of mine that aren't broken, unfortunately. But you can repair them like this. Um, so if you stick them on. And then with a bit of basing, you're not going to notice that that's there. And then we've got the ones. The ones on the strips are the ones that didn't break because um, it'd be easier to put these back into the into the gaps on the base if they're intact. So a little bit of a support there I didn't clean off. That's a bit lazy, but sometimes... Oh, let's, let's worry about that later. Sometimes it's not that easy to catch every little bit before you cure, and then they're a bit harder to remove once cured. So we're going along the line here. Uh, I still haven't seen any feet, so maybe this is a case of the feet are underneath the robes and it's not that my printing is eating off the feet. Or it may be I've eaten off the feet and the robes are not supposed to be uh, touching the floor with no feet. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? There are so many variables in this game. It really is. Sometimes I kind of I kind of think, can I really be bothered with this? Uh, the amount of time and effort it's taking to get stuff done. And then other times I, I, I feel quite positive about it. So it's, it's, it's certainly not a, a hobby for the faint hearted. And it, there, there is a definite potential for this to become the hobby and eat up uh, any available time you would have had to do things like painting or, or, um, or kind of, yeah, building even because the, 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 it can become all consuming, especially if you get into the case of like having more than one machine and getting into these farms. I can imagine if that's something you're trying to fit around a full time job. Yeah, it, it may be all right when you've got COVID running around and not much else on. Right. Uh, so that was the hand gunners. We've got some. Oh, oh, we can hear the dog whimpering. We've got some rubbish here from the spray cans. We've got the um, uh, rangers, aren't they, these fellas? So I think they're called crossbows. Uh, I wish I knew if they were supposed to have feet that you could see. 
So uh, th th these broke far less often, and that's because there's kind of a, a bracing of the miniatures between these crossbows. So I found that a lot easier to remove from the uh, build plate. I was putting the whole plate after washing in IPA, I put the whole plate in the freezer for 30 minutes and that made them very, very, very easy to get off, generally. Uh, like, v virtually no problems at all. Uh, unfortunately, uh, as I said with the handgunners, the, the gap was a bit too big here and the fact that they didn't brace across meant that I lost quite a lot. Well, not lost, because they're still there, they're just broken. Um, so these, these are your rangers. Uh, they're a little bit in a little bit of an awkward spot in the game at the moment, Rangers, because there are 110 points, and um, quite a lot of the things that they were good for doing for the dwarf army, uh, the revolution rules has made that niche not so cr critical, because they were the only things that could chase cavalry, so you had to have them. Otherwise, how would you deal with a cavalry army? Look at that spade there; that's brilliant. Um, uh, but now that everybody can chase cavalry and flies if you get them in the flank or rear. Uh, this means that these guys' role is a little bit less, a little bit less, and there's still a whole hunk of cheese at 110 points. So, uh, these are your rangers. Again, if you're in the market for dwarf bottles and you want to print your own, hey, get over there, because why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you print off these ones? Especially if you can do it better than I can. Um, so, uh, tomorrow we're going to talk about the end of... Um, have we got some more Cromity Forge stuff to do? Oh, we've got the amazing case of the Shrinking Warriors, I guess. You'll definitely see it in that, in that video. And then we will... Um, I think we're moving on to... I'm doing some nids for Paul in an Elegoo washable, which is water washable, clear blue Elegoo resin. So a completely different type of resin. So, and, and some of the issues I've been having with that and some of the successes because you've got to balance your successes and your uh, failures and try and keep it on an even keel mentally okay so this is uh, episode 17 of um, adventures in 3d printing